and it's tea time. Thanks for waiting. It was really good cake. So we're going to be doing some illumination. I was it was really good cake you guys. <laughs> And now we're here with tea and Photoshop. And we're going to do some sheep wanna illumination. And I think we're gonna do it with with a horizontal canvas. There we go. So now that I've swapped microphones and headsets and played around, I tried the uh, stand mic again um, earlier in the hopes that it might work, but it's just so much ambient noise that I couldn't deal. So we're back to the little lavalier mic and our usual setup. And I have for you some amazing, amazing reference images that I'm just going to pop in here. that I, I, I went on a, on a medieval bestiary adventure on the internet and found some really amazing examples. Oh, this one is, this one is a particular favorite. Some amazing lizard examples. We've also got, got some sheep over here you know, <clears throat> excuse me, so that we can have some, some wool examples. There we go. Yeah, so the fun, the fun thing, the fun thing about, about medieval bestiaries is that they're not so much drawn from life as sort of drawn from other people's drawings of a thing that was described in someone else's book. So you get a lot of sort of, this is how we draw a sheep. This is how we draw a lion. Have you seen a lion? No, this is how they're drawn. Um, you also get these sort of patterned backgrounds and these little trees. Um, so basically a sheep guana is sort of a perfect, a perfect candidate for a, for a medieval bichet. They, they do they do have sheep in England um, and Europe. So the thing, um, it's my personal opinion is that it has a lot more to do with sort of standardized stylization. Um, sort of like if you look at something drawn, like a, a comic book drawn in Japan, for example, you, you kind of immediately are like, oh, that's, that's a comic book from Japan because of certain choices they make in the way they draw things as sort of just that's the style. It's sort of a similar thing with, with um, manuscript illumination or sort of even, say, Egyptian, Egyptian art, where like th th this is the way it's drawn. Everyone understands that this is the symbol for sheep. This is the symbol for person. So... There's that element. The other element is that a certain number of the things that are being drawn in these bestiaries don't exist. So, uh, you know, if someone says, draw, draw a dragon, no, really, these things are totally real. You know. And let's, oh, chat, chat. What, what, you're, you've gone on a real tangent here. Sheep dog. They were all they were all high is apparently what we've decided. I mean to be fair, there were a lot of, of lead line chalices. Lead makeup. 
Also, they were just really bored. I mean, this is what they did all day. Be that as it may, what we are doing is the equivalent of, of, a, of a dragon. Uh, we're doing a, a sheep, a sort of a sheep guana. There was a really good, I'm looking for a really good dragon pose. That I had, oh. Oh, here's one, here's one with some, with some dragon, with some dragon bird murder. That's a solid choice. <laughs> lead, lead doesn't make you high though, but you know. Um, but to be fair, I don't, I don't necessarily think that any of that matters. I think that it's perfectly possible to come up with really, really odd stylized illustrations of things. Um, just, just on your own. For example, we're about to do a thing called a sheep guana that was made up on Twitter at random because of a private argument between two people. So I think we should get let everyone just be as creative as they've been and call it fair. So onwards to sheep guana. So I'm thinking we're gonna do a sort of a a framed style and then we'll have you know the sheep guana in here and some trees Maybe, maybe some, some gold leaf background and then the poem will go here uh, with maybe, maybe a decorative capital, but maybe not because it's a poem, so it doesn't really need a single decorative capital. I can't, I can't prove that no one in that private argument was high. Um, so it's fair that, what can you do? <laughs> now, now Hannah, you will always be, you will always be included in the sheep guana lore forever and ever. Ooh, the sheep guana could be getting the decorative capital. That could be fun. That would be more like, like overlap at the bottom. So he could be, uh, trying to eat that S there. And then he'd be, up in the up in the frame sort of like that just just chewing on the chewing on the capital now he's got kind of a frame yeah. And hilarious, hilarious, like, like toad, toad lizard slash, slash goat feet kind of. Yes, everyone, everyone involved now has a, a, a sheep guana doctorate. Um, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's not, 
It's not worth anything at the job market, but that's okay. And, and of course, as we all remember, a sheep guana have ears. I'm kind of into the ears that, that stick up for some reason. So I think we're going to give him those. <laughs> I read back the, the job where you are an actual sheep. Yeah, look, I, I, the sticky, the sticking up ears are pretty, are pretty great. I feel like I, I want to, I want to try and get the, the face sort of. enough enough like an actual lizard to 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 be questionable and then yeah perfect do, do put all of this over in a corner and make it slightly transparent Because now, it's time, it's time to actually start. <laughs> Sheep guana conservation is an important, an important subject. It needs, it needs supporters. Okay. Got some some stuff going on there. There we go. Now. The illumination of sheep guana, which we have learned to uh that we've le we've learned are ridden by Quailadin, which I think is a thing that we should bring up, is that is that the 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 lore of sheep guana continues to grow, and uh, and now we know they are ridden, armored by Quailadin. So that's a thing to keep in mind. Oh, and does he have, or does he have like kind of a, kind of a dragon, dragon, happy pointy mouth? Eh. Happy pointy, happy pointy mouth. Kind of more of a, of a, of a dragony mouth. Make him a little bit cheerful. To be fair, as far as I can tell, the mouths of most medieval illuminated creatures are essentially the same. <laughs> uh, just, you know. I thought we might put I thought we might put baby sheep guana in there actually instead of instead of uh instead of baby quail. Just you know. Ooh, oh Hannah, share share what you've learned about about expressions from medieval Twitter. Oh, grinning is seen as murderous. <laughs> Excellent. So what we are drawing 
is is a is a murderous a murderous sheep guana apparently. Happy murder. <laughs> oh no. I mean, yeah, I don't, hmm. It explains why, why everyone in, in medieval illumination looks, looks so concerned. Because <laughs> apparently being happy is bad. Should you be editing right now, Auntie, or should you be right here watching me draw a hilarious, silly, medieval sheep guana. Just sketching a little outline there. And let's see. I guess lines for, for fur. I think his head needs to be a wee bit shorter. Let it get slightly out of hand. There we go. Better. What you're confused about your species? I was pretty sure you were a secretary bird. Where's the confusion in that? Is there species of shepherd. Let's see. Let's. Give you some. Some tiny little talon toes. So here's here's some uh, here's some food for thought. Let's let's what kind of uh, what kind of hilarious misconceptions does the uh, does the illustrator of this bestiary have about sheep guana? That's right. I'm asking you to invent fictional falsehoods about a fictional creature <laughs> what what sort of what sort of hilarious things is is the the writer of the of the bestiary that contains this sheep guana which i mean it's clearly a bestiary for like wealthy children it's got like a, a cute little poem in it what what uh what what incorrect assumptions has he made Perhaps he perhaps he thinks that they eat children. Oh, that sheep quite yes. That they are in fact the size of dinosaurs. Perhaps he found a fossil. And he believes it's proof that, that the giant of, of the giant sheep guanas of old. See, that's exactly what I'm talking about, Hannah. The, 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 the hilarious misconceptions of, uh, of the actual habits of real animals as assumed by medieval, medieval scholars. 
that is not, in fact, an eraser. There it goes. But hybrids of lions and pards, and that pards are super, super leprous. Oh, super, eh, super lecherous. And hyenas change their sex every year. And yeah, I also would like to know what a part is. Oh, it will, it's, 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 a part is a creature that doesn't exist. Yes, well. Oh, like a, okay, I, I love the idea that, 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 some, that some medieval person was like, oh, you know these real things that we've seen? They, uh, they're a hybrid of, of this imaginary thing that we've never seen. That's perfect. Yeah, that makes, that makes perfect sense. That's definitely, that's definitely true. So let's see that they have, that they have bird wings, that they, uh, that they're gigantic. What other, what other hilarious, hilarious falsehoods? What mistaken, what mistaken things about the sheep guana? Anti Shepherd, your connection is obviously great. Is that sarcasm, or is that, or is that your connection is great because you should be doing something else? It could go either way. Ooh, rows of jagged teeth. Camel, camelopards, and okay, hold on. A, a what now? Cam hybrids of cam cam camel leopards and bats. I'm gonna pick this foot up. I think he needs some some interest here. Or a hybrid of two animals that aren't sheep and iguanas. I mean, define information. Oh, a camel apart is a giraffe. Oh, that's... That's adorable. I did not... I learned something new. I did not know that that was what... That, that was what they called giraffes. I, uh... I am excited to learn... To learn this thing. I had no idea. Also, sometimes birds would migrate, and the explanation was that, like, cranes would turn into robins. Oh, and cranes apparently waged war on pygmies. Cool. Cause, because giraffes are kind of long-necked camels. Yeah. Yeah, that's... Sure. Of course they are. Oh, uh, cranes. Cr the cranes have gone to war. Such violent birds. Okay. Let's see. And then he needs a crazy tail that loops around itself. Because of course, oops, mistakes were made. I've gone the wrong direction. That's the top, there we go. Ah, uh, camel leopards. Ah, uh, such a good, such a good way to name a giraffe. I love it.
Oh, barn flies fly into the water and nap until spring. It's a... Uh, Oh, give it stripes in honor of the thylacine's possible survival. Fair, fair call. Ah, but sheep guana wool might be strong enough to avoid being cut by a sword. We've we've already discussed the powers of 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 sheep guano wool. Sturdy, sturdy, and and. Uh, and fire retardant. Sheep guano wool is a, is a, is a thing of, of power and beauty. That's why they're raised in so many different species across the world. Across the the known, the known D and D world. So I'm particularly enamored of. So there's a bunch of a lot of medieval sheep have just um, like just like a sort of a curly Q thing going on, um, or they just have these sort of straight lines. I am quite enamored with the one that I showed you, who has um these these. <laughs> These luxurious, these luxurious waves of wool. Like the person that, that, that drew that particular sheep just like had a really beautiful, well-groomed sheep and was like, I need to memorialize this. All right, chat. You have a job. Go, go. Links, links to links to thylacines. Yay! It would be great if they were okay. If there were, in fact, still. Tasmanian tigers. There is hope. There is hope for the Tasmanian tiger. That that's very specific. Yeah, there was isn't there there is a medieval like creature that like oh oh <laughs> Hannah in the all caps. Oh no. Hi Elizabeth Art. Um you've joined us just at the moment in which we've learned about Bannacon, the fire farting bull. Just, you know. In case you wondered what we did in this stream. <laughs> it's, uh, it's taken a turn. We're, uh, we're here today drawing medieval sheep guana in honor of the original sheep guana poem. I foolishly asked uh, asked chat to give me to give me hilarious medieval falsehoods about sheep guana, a completely made up uh, made up creature. And uh, and they've really embraced it. <laughs> they've gone the extra mile. Um, and now now we've learned about Bannacon, or Bon Bonacon. 
I, I, I'm just going to say it however I want. <laughs> and, uh, and so that's a thing. Also, I have learned today, I will repeat, that the medieval name for giraffes was camel leopard, and I love it. I mean, I feel like sheep guana kind of like breathe fire. I don't. We we've discussed we've discussed their fire breathing already, so technically, I feel like. And of course, they breathe fire more or less accident accidentally, uh, based on based on the fact that I was building a a, a gravy boat and and. Auntie Shepherd wanted to light it on fire. We should have, so I want this one can't. I've drawn his tail in a in a in a in a in a non. He'd have to he'd have to have his tail up here. I mean, we could still we could still make that happen. He would have to have his tail, you know, up in the up in the top, so that he could so that he could you know have flames coming out of both ends. Yes, but there could be a breed where it goes the other way. Yes, our, our resident our resident expert, R Craft, has all of the power to to create whatever sheep guana information the world the world requires. It breathes quail. No, it doesn't breathe quail. Quail aren't falling from the sky. You don't hallucinate quail. By golly, isn't it enough that we've created armor for it for the quail it to ride? So many, so, so chat, chat, I've, I've given you two options. Are we farting fire? We have the power to have it fart fire. We can do this. Is this what you really want? Tell me now and I'll make it happen. All right, we have a yes and a no. And little quail, that was not the question that I asked. Keep 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 voting on farting fire chat and I'll and I'll and I'll draw a little quail around its feet. <laughs> Put quail in it. A yes or no. uh It's 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 not the question. Quail is not the question, even if you think it's the answer. Well, we have a yes and a no, so I'm going to go with what I've already drawn. <laughs> I'm going to go with what I've already drawn, and there will be, there will be no, no farting fire. It's not happening. You weren't, you weren't adamant enough about it, Chet. I'm sorry. <laughs> see shouldn't it it should hmm oh that's a good question should it have like should it have like um like sheep horns you know like or or should it have more um more like sort of oops more iguana iguana tine kind of horns you know like kind of Okay, yes, what why why not both? It does not it does not grow horns that look like quail. Look, look, I put I gave you I gave you baby quail, they're right here. Look at the baby quail. It's a thing that happened. I'm <laughs> I'm putting quail in. That one's mad. I don't know why. <laughs> okay, so it's got it's got like like iguana sort of horns. And then 
and then it's got like sheep sheep horns ah, the sheep horns kind of ruin the ear silhouette makes me sad I like the ear silhouette maybe they're over here in a little the curled up kind that's better Yes, the mini the mini ram horn curling kind of horns. Here I tell you what. Along with fire, there's a baby quail. It looks mad. <laughs> I don't know why it looks mad. Its life has been hard, I guess. And it's got a stripy tail. Because not only do iguanas have a stripy tail, but but we're 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 celebrating the potential existence of the of the Tasmanian tiger. So we wanna have some He's mad. He's either mad because he's about to be set on fire or because he's come out of like a sheep guana stomach with fire. Either way, his life is not going the way he had hoped and planned. The best he can do is just hang on and hope for the best. Okay, let's... So now, now that we've started the baby quail, I think what we actually need is a hilarious number of them. Just like... Just like a truly hilarious number of baby quail. It's trying to be a sheep guana vet. Oh no. He has concerns. Fun fact, because we've we've got a whole a whole uh, a whole bird world now. These baby quail also relate to the fact that we that we invented a medieval lie that sheep guana were enormous. So just just tying it all together. Making making it all work out. <laughs> Baby quail everywhere. Oh, oh Tenchi. It's nice. It's nice of you to it's nice of you to make this love it, lovable and charming. Although we've already established that grinning in medieval illumination means that you're evil, so, you know. Okay, let's see. He needs sort of a frame now. Something. He's breaking the frame, obviously, with his, with his fire. He was going to be eating the S, but I guess I, I got too excited. I think he's probably breaking the frame with his tail, too. So we'll just kind of... I mean, are the quail... The quail aren't smiling, though. The quail... In, in medieval language, if the quail aren't grinning, are they evil? Is this just... Is, is, the, is, is, the, is, the, is the angry facial expression just the, the one that we expect? Kind of frame. They believe the sheep. That's that's how the fire that they, they believed that, that the sheep guana ate ate flint and and uh, and a striker, and that's how fire happened. Just, just take, take some, take some lamb and some iguana, and just kind of make like a sausage and call it sheep guana meat. Oh, 
Yeah, of course. They they eat them when they're every every single one. They eat they eat them when they're children. You know, it's just a thing that happens <laughs> every single time. Let's see. I'm I'm gonna be amused by 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 camel leopards for like my entire vacation now. It's just a thing I'm gonna be thinking about for days. Is that someone was like, oh this this is definitely part camel and part leopard. That's that's what we should call it. Yeah. Perfect. I mean, of course the constellation Camelopardus is a giraffe. We've just learned. That's Oh well let's 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 put some let's put some stars in the background to make it exciting and celestial. How about that? There we go. But he's on like a little a little grassy hill. A medieval grassy knoll. What's going on up here? This is gonna be like a zigzag pattern. Because sure, why not? And then we'll give it some sort of extra decoration. And this, this looks so medieval. Yay! I'm successfully pastiching an ancient style of, of style of art. So yeah, um, I this this so that's the other part of this chat. Um, Mouse girl, mouse girl, my roommate is going to be uh, collig doing the calligraphy for the, the sheep guana poem as relates to this illumination that I have created. Um, and yeah, Nevik Link, you should, you should definitely also, also jump into the world of of illuminated manuscript creation. So let's see. Got that kind of kind of settled. Now let's see. Does he need does he need a capital? And if if so, does that mean I need to know what what hand you're using now in order to to create a fake enough capital? Perhaps you should make the capital. I'm uh, I'm bad at writing. I'm really great at drawing fire breathing medieval iguanas and terrible at at decorative decorative lettering without the aid of like vectors and a lot of tweaking and a lot of extra care. Oh, I could use any kind of capital I like. Woo, fun. The world is open to me. Vi Vyworn, you, you don't have to buy a print of the poem you wrote. Don't worry. We'll get you. We'll get you one. <laughs> don't you worry. Um, but yes, when it when it is done, it will be available for for, for the internet to to possess. Um, if everyone's very good and very excited, we might even make hilarious medieval sheep guana t-shirts. Um, assuming I can find a t-shirt place that I like that doesn't require me to give them any money.
Okay, so apparently the decorative capitals usually have very little to do with the hand the Scrivener uses, so we'll just we'll just do whatever we want, shall we? Uh, yes, I, I've I have in fact given art to, to Auntie Shepherd for t shirts. So um, I assume she knows of the quality of the t-shirts which she is getting made. Um, there are just a bunch of those companies that you can kind of, like tea, tea Public or whatever, where you can kind of just give them art and sell t-shirts with them. But I, I never like not knowing sort of what the product will be. So, you know want to make sure that I'm, if I'm making t-shirts, that I'm making nice ones. Okay. Now we've got an excellent, I don't know why I'm zooming out. I don't know why I'm making this, this hilariously small on screen. Oops, what have I done? There we go. Decorative capital S. Well, this is going to take some Googling. Rep oh yeah, oh yeah, because he'd have to. The head has to be up for it to be a mug, or it, it won't it won't wrap properly. Let's see, medieval capital S. No, I typed D. That did not help. <laughs> okay, these are. These are a lot of Romanesque columns. I feel I feel as if perhaps something has gone wrong. I have concerns. What does nothing start with S? Have I used Have I used the medieval capital S illumination? Ah, uh, that was that was more helpful. Oh, this is a good one. This is a this is a solid a solid variety of S. That's right. Come come for the come for the art. Listen as I as I look up capital letters and don't show them to you. All right, those are some good examples. So some some S examples here. We have the sort of red red floral. Oh, that one's very small for some reason. Um, and then this one that is just it's just a dragon. Apparently, uh, dragons make good S's. I saw a couple of S dragons. So so that's fun. Um. Yeah, so so I'm kind of I'm kind of leaning towards a uh, towards some sort of dragony dragony perhaps a sheep guana yes perhaps a sheep guana s seems like seems like an appropriate an appropriate choice to make. You jet. Yes, but but Hannah, that's your life. You could have a conversation about about dragon letters, barfing plants, any time. It could just happen at any moment. So let's see. So we'll have. So I think I think maybe maybe the uh, maybe the the capital is is like a baby. So he's got just a, a wee, a wee little. A wee little sheep guana head. 
Yes. Oh Lord. Oh, I've got I've got two people in chat who who will who will uh, who will let me know if I've mixed if I've mixed my medieval eras of crazy reference. Oh no. <laughs> So, so let's see. I'm glad, I'm glad I, I, oh good, I've, I've picked, I've randomly picked a good S to match my randomly 12th to 13th century sheep guano. Excellent. Excellent. I've, I've stumbled, I've stumbled into accuracy. Good job, me. I mean, as much accuracy as required for a made up animal in a, in a made up in a beta manuscript. But I mean, if you're gonna, if you're gonna pastiche a style, you might as well really go for it, as it were. So, so chat, have you, have you gotten excited about the fact that typesetting used to be F and S interchangeable what's why do I keep seeing feep guana in here oh okay we're just we're just we're just discussing typesetting cool typesetting history um, once long ago there was not only not standardized spelling but uh, F and S was the same was the same type letter <laughs> oh, ten G three. You you set the, you set them off on a on a on a typesetting tangent. No, see, like I I am I am a a printmaker slash letterpress fan of old. So so I'll happily tell you about typesetting. Everyone should have to set type at least once just so they understand where letting and kerning actually comes from. But uh, but I was I was pleased I was pleased to discover once long ago that 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 spelling was not standardized at one point because I am bad at spelling, and I I feel like if the world would just allow me to spell things the way I think they should be spelled, that would be perfectly fair. It's um the the so it's related to letting um, different pieces that you slot in between words and uh, and letters for spacing <laughs> not turn it's, it all comes back to bird D and D. It always comes back to bird D and D. Bird D and D and, and, and camel leopards. Okay, S, S, S needs his tail to be, yeah, there we go. Needs to actually be an S. An S shape. Eh, this needs to go more this way. <laughs> yes. Ah. Uh, Ah, uh, the joy, the joy, the joy of camel leopards has not yet faded. No, I liked it better before. It's going to be a badass. I don't care. <laughs> it's fine. It 
medieval S. Let's go up a little bit. There we go. That makes it like a better S. And then he has little feet on both sides because because he's not a dragon. He's a sheep guana. So he's kind of galloping. It's kind of adorable. Huh. Chat just gave me a message that says, welcome to the chat room. Uh, thanks, chat. Is that a thing that you just do? Neat. <laughs> I have seen other people have chat just automatically, randomly say things. I don't know how to make it do that. Um, just like I don't know how to make it do a significant portion of the other cool things that I've seen it do for other people. I don't understand. I don't understand the internet, not really. <laughs> I'll be over here with my with my mini disc recorder. <laughs> my DV camera. Yeah, exactly. Chatbot. There should be like there's a chatbot that says random random things, right? I mean, I could have so much fun making the chatbot tell you random story facts lying to you. Telling you to telling you to be nice. There are so many things that the that, that, that chatbot could do. If only I knew how to tell it to do literally anything. But I don't. I don't have the faintest idea. Again, I suspect it may be one of those things where I need whatever the the affiliate thing or fifty subscribers and all of the 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 weird gamification things that Twitch does that I need to accomplish. So let's see. Do we? Yeah, let's have let's have the 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 plant the plant barf circle around. You know, make it pretty. Make it pretty, I say in the same sentence as plant barf. It's fine. It's medieval illumination. There we go. Okay. Oh, you don't need anything to have it. Hmm. Well, I'll investigate chatbot later then and see if I can convince it. See if I can convince it to to I'll tell you what I'm going to convince it to do. I'm just going to I'm going to have it continuously tell you the story of Hero the of Hero the Hen and and Leon the Gander. You didn't think they were going to come back, did you? Oh. Oh, but they have. I found a way to organically work them into conversation. If it isn't pretty, is it really plant bar fair? All right, so just where to, I think probably here, maybe. Kind of tie them together a little bit. Bring, bring the fire around some, I guess. I don't know, fire eh. undid too many things. Anyway, it's pretty, pretty solid start. Do we have enough baby quail chat? Is there enough baby? We could, we could add, we could add more, we could add more baby quail. We do, we do. We have the power to, to to keep adding baby quail basically forever.
They're all, they're all so mad. I just, I started, I started a system of drawing them that, that just, they started off mad and they haven't, they haven't really changed. I'm going to have one, I'm going to have one falling off the page. Um, it's already the, uh, the, the, the fire breathing one is already, is already fire breathing quail. I think we've got, we've got enough, we've got enough quail. No, uh, I mean, it's not that we have enough quail chat. It's that we have enough, we have enough quail being, being spewed onto the page in various ways. That, that I think we're we're set we're set for for uh, for for quail there we go <laughs> Oh, oh, Necro Buffalo! You walked away and missed and missed the fact that I covered the entire ground in baby quail. Well, welcome back. Welcome back to Friday Tea Time, where quail just show up everywhere. That's what you get. Yeah, that's what you get for walking away. When you walk away, quail just appear while you're gone. Okay. Let's see. Let's let's fix that horn up. I feel like I kind of kind of a uh, kind of left it left it as a as a quick gesture. Let's try and, and, and clarify it a little bit. That's it's more like it. <laughs> and suddenly, quail. Uh, I don't. I don't like the. I don't like the shape of it. I'm gonna. I'm gonna try and fix it. Not on that layer. I want it to be. Yeah, more like that. A nicer, rounder shape. Just yeah, more like that shape. Better. I'm feeling I'm feeling better about the horn now. It's a little bit less arbitrarily slapped on. Still feels a little arbitrarily slapped on. I don't know, maybe if it were bigger, maybe if it were, if it were, if it were like a proper, proper ram's horn. Eh, eh, don't know. I'll, I'll make a, a dramatic final decision when I start doing magical colors and things. Right, it's uh it's a little bit early, it's 420, but I've ran out of tea. So I think that I'm gonna take a quick five minute break now that I feel like we've finished the sketch. Take a little break, make a little bit more tea, and uh come back with more tea for the rest of Friday tea time. Get some ink and color on this magical sheep guana illumination. And uh, and yes, everyone everyone make your tea, make your sandwiches, change your computers, change your locations. Now is the time. We're about to start, 
a short break. Break time logo up. Oh, I'm just gonna I'm gonna slide it down. I'm gonna slide it no. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna slide the sheep guana up so you can just there we go. Now he's now he's breathing. Now he's breathing fire into the into the kettle. <laughs> I will be back shortly. And we will do some color on our little medieval illumination. Enjoy break time.
and I'm back with tea. And Hannah wants a tea kettle graphic version, but with the uh, sheep quantum barfing. So, so what you want is is a sheep guana with with a with a, a six frame animation of his of his fire of his fire breathing. That's uh that's certainly possible. Yeah, with, yeah, with fire where the steam is. Yes, fire fire sheep guana. We're back to medieval sheep guana illumination. And it's time to start finishing. Get some, some ink lines and details in there. So let's find ourselves a nice smooth inking brush. Maybe, maybe parrot clean. Yeah, that's good. And yes, with fire where the steam is, exactly. With, with, uh, I could just, basically what I would do is I would take this exact illustration and I would just draw three different frames of that fire and loop it. And then that would be animation. Because, you know, as you do, I need to find where I put my reference. There it is. Okay, so ink lines and then some, some painting. But we want, I think, I think probably a, a slightly warm, a dark but slightly brown line. And some pretty delicate lines, I think. It's a pretty, pretty thin, delicate brush line. Appears to be sort of the general quality of illumination. Snail, snail worm. Oh, that's yes, my 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 keyframes of 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 snail worm explanation um, during one of Hannah's streams, she had various marginalia creatures in in chat voted combat, and I. And a hard pitch for for the snail creature did a a, a multi frame animation of uh, of how his whole body <laughs> unrolls to whip at you you know as you do it was it was a it was an excellent it was an excellent stream it was a great idea. Um, when I say it was a great idea, I mean the stream, not not my not my snail drawing. Uh, my snail drawing was fine, but the stream idea was amazing. <laughs> no, the snail was epic. The snail, the snail was 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 charming and adorable. And uh, and I wanted him, and I wanted him to win. So, you know. Just gonna <laughs> Yeah, what was that was a uh... um I don't yeah, like the 
I don't remember the triangle guy and the and the cat. I I don't. I don't remember what happened. I don't know, but it it was it was it was an excellent idea. All right, I'm just gonna. Oh, I'm having that I'm having that artist moment where you're like, ah, the the sketch is better. Oh, I hate that feeling. Hate it. Hate it. I'm gonna ignore it and 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 push through it. It's okay. I'm gonna to attempt to articulate a, a a a thing that might be particular to me, but I, I suspect has I suspect affects artists. Um, besides just me. The thing about a sketch. Is that it's a sketch so the fact that it has a lot of sort of lines a lot of sort of variations of things like sketchy quality just so like you know look at all the, the little sketch lines the the various choices I made over and over again um, not only do all of those lines give it an intrinsic life and motion make it feel sort of vibrant but also you you sort of you you can fill in the best possible solution to that and for me when I start to ink it and it starts to go static and hard and final it loses some of that sort of not just magic of potential but vibrant vibrant motion and for me that always feels a little bit I don't know, like it, it, like killing it. It feels like I'm, I'm flattening it and making it a little bit more dead. Um, and I don't know why for sure. I think part of it is that I am an animator by, by choice and training. <laughs> and that a part of it is that I want everything to be in motion. So when I'm drawing something, I'm thinking less about its static shape and more about its gesture and its motion. So that I end up feeling like I'm Like I'm stopping it when I when I make hard lines for it. I don't know why exactly, but that's that's just it's just a thing that happens to me. And sometimes it, it just it feels worse than other times, if that makes sense. Sometimes it feels like I zoom out and I'm like, oh, I've killed it. It's it's so much worse now. And sometimes it's it's a little bit less. Um, it hasn't bothered me much with the bird D and D um, drawings. Interestingly, I'm not sure why, but inking them has has felt sort of fine for for whatever that's worth. Yeah, that is that is the other thing is that it's it's supposed to be it's supposed to be kind of a kind of a weird stilted medieval ink drawing, so you know that's fine. Um, and I mean it's in in an, in a very real sense um, this is 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 less an art criticism to work towards and more a, a, a mental block that I have been working to learn to ignore. Um, because there's, there's valid 
there's valid criticisms of your own work. And then there's, um, then there's just sort of weird personal tics that aren't creating valid improvement. They're just there in the way of what you're making. And it's important to sort of parse the difference between those. And learn when to ignore your brain going, no, it's bad, and when to, to accept it and try and fix it. Ah, uh, yes, they did not have control Z in the in the days of yore. While while I'm while I'm just rambling about about art philosophy, um, my personal belief is that if I start undoing a line more than a you know more than a time or two, um, not so much in the sketching phase because I I don't that's just kind of it's the same as erasing for me that's cleanup. But, uh, so like I just undid this ink line. If I start doing that over and over again, my policy is to spend some time drawing with a pen on paper without sketching first. To try and remind myself how it feels to make a firm decision about a line, to think through it before I put it down on paper, and to make it correct the first time. Because I really do believe that that the ability to digitally undo a line can can make you a sloppy artist if you spend too much time in the digital world relying on it. And it's a thing I try to avoid by going back to, to paper. I had an excellent art director many years ago uh, who would sketch solely in Sharpie. Uh, he may still sketch solely in Sharpie. You can uh, you can find him find him on Twitter as Mike Daly, who storyboards at Pixar now, and uh, bother him and ask him. Actually, maybe maybe don't harass him on Twitter. I don't I don't want to explain how that happened, <laughs> but um, but yeah, he he would sketch everything in Sharpie. For that, for that basic reason, because he felt like it, it trained him to, to make firm, immediate decisions, and to think through his marks before he made them. Yeah. Yes, maybe. Okay. Well, so, let's let's. He comes on Twitter and sees cheap guana ninety times in notifications. No, let's let's uh, let's tell a story. Because he doesn't deserve this, because I was a bad employee, um, not not in the functional sense. I did my work, and I feel like I did a pretty decent job. But um, well, let me let me tell you the story of the dead whale. And 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 Mike Daly, my art director, I was working on children's games. And there was a certain charming property about trains. And I was doing um, the backgrounds for it. And we had a daily art meeting. I'm, I'm for legal reasons, not going to tell you what children show about trains it is. <laughs> Just for plausible deniability. I'm sure that NDA has worn out, but let's just assume that it hasn't. Um, but I think, yeah, Hannah, I think that you've probably heard the story. Um, anyway, for some reason, the daily art meeting was the first thing in the morning. At 9 a.m., and I'm not a morning person. I'm so not a morning person that now I haven't got, I mean, I don't think I've gotten up save because I have to catch a flight or something like that, you know, in a, in years. My workday starts at noon. 
at best. <laughs> so I needed a way to motivate myself to, uh, to pay attention at a 9 a.m. art meeting. So uh, there, was a, there was a scene with an ocean and little things that popped up in the background, and one of them was a, a perfectly... A per no, I was, I was there. I was about 15 minutes late every day, but I'm about 15 minutes late to almost everything I do. Um, but I was there at the art meeting. Um, but in the background of one of, of one of the, uh, of one of the little game scenes, there was a, there was a happy little whale that floated up and like bobbed up and down and then went away again. And I started, uh, I started hiding inside all of the slides of art to be reviewed. One image in which there would be that whale dead on the ground somewhere. <laughs> So I started, I started hiding, I started hiding a dead whale in one image of the slideshow of art review every morning. Just a random image, just dropping it in there. The poor producer, who was a lovely woman, um, who was in fact, fun fact, the hands in the treasure shot in Goonies. Uh, she, she was desperately worried that, that it was going to accidentally slip into an actual uh, licensor review. But I was very careful, and she never stopped me. So, you know. And this kept going for probably six months. And over time, I I slowly I slowly um, slowly rotted the whale away <laughs> until it was just a whale skeleton covered in seagulls. And then for Christmas. I sent him a card that was a long strip of the slowly decaying whale, ending with a seagull holding a sprig of holly. And uh, that's, that's probably my crowning achievement at that job, <laughs> was, uh, was the dead whale adventure. So if anyone joining this stream has wondered if this is a thing that, that accidentally happened and if I'm not really like this, no, I'm, I really like this. All the time have been for years. Just, uh, I mean, the whale was very much alive in the, in the whole in the, in the in the game itself just uh and i don't even i don't remember what motivated me to murder the whale and put it on the shore of like a nice hilly valley i don't i don't remember if i was annoyed at it for some reason or if i just thought at the moment that it would be really funny i mean i was right it was really funny it's still really funny i'm still kind of amused at it now telling you this story like 12 years later <laughs> Uh, but it was it was a good it was a good time. And that's uh and that's my story of having a normal job. And that's why I work alone in my house. No, that's that's not totally why I work alone in my house. <laughs> it's not the only reason. Um, ish, 12 years ish. It's been, it's been a while. I haven't had a real job in a long time. Uh, I mean, I've been self-employed for a long time. I'm old, Neviclink. <laughs> I sit, I sit in my house, freelancing, and don't have to go to work at nine in the morning anymore. It is a glorious life. I know, 12 years does seem like an exceptionally long time, doesn't it? And yet... 
here we are. This was, so I, I told you, I told you the show, the show is, 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 that's all you're going to know about it because, because contracts. Oh my, Anna I had no idea it had such a pro profound effect. <laughs> So the the show was a train show. I was making a game. The whale was just a background thing in the game. I have no idea if it was in the show. I was already an adult and my knowledge of the show was based on essentially what I was told for the licensing. And all that really matters is that I murdered a whale and had it eaten by seagulls just to amuse myself at nine in the morning and to troll my art director, who I assume has forgiven me. By now. Or perhaps even forgotten. But it was a good time. All right. Get getting there, getting there with our with our sheep guana here. Zooming out to give you some visual visual. I do not I do not have the uh, do not have the art still. Um oops. Yes, sheep guana inking. Uh, so yeah, there will be there will be prints of this once there's a uh, once there's some manuscripts added. Uh, as is as is fair. The. Uh, the sales of said prints will be divided amongst myself and a uh, mouse girl doing illumination because you know that's that's how these things work um, if anyone wants anything else that i've done as prints by the way uh you can just ask my there's some up on my website shop uh sarah with t.com slash shop um but the ones that I've put up are just ones that have been popular in the past and that I, I just had series of. So they were easy to list, but I can basically list and print anything that you want. I do my own prints at home, so if there's something that I've done that, that you can't seem to find, or for some reason you just really need bird D and D prints, just let me know. And that is a thing that can definitely happen. I think I think the stripes though aren't going to be inked. I think those will just be be color paint. But we do. Let's see. We need to we need to ink these these Vera small quail children. Give them little little angry quail eyes. A little yes, small angry quail children. What do they? How do they do bird? Am I just gonna? I think I'm just gonna go with it. I'm gonna go with my stick legs. And let's see. Are we gonna? Yeah, we'll just we'll just paint the stripes on like this. That seems fair. Get 
some some baby quail in here. Oh, this one's really mad. What you so mad about? Angry baby quail. In case anyone missed it uh, on my Twitter when I retweeted it, there is more, there's more sheep guana biology species lore um, by the esteemed Rcraft that is up on Twitter. Uh, and it's linked. I retweeted it. I think Hannah also retweeted it. It's, it's excellent. It involves, it involves the riding of sheep guana. Which means now's the time that I encourage everyone to write strange fiction about the stuff that we're inventing as we do this. Because you are welcome to do so. Write about bird D&D. &D. Invent stuff for the world of sheep guana. Put them together. Have, have quail riding sheep guana into battle as, as our craft has described. Do whatever you want. But then make sure I get to retweet it to everyone so that we can all enjoy it. All right, baby quail. Oh, thought I did three lines for you. Here's your other line. It's gone. I shall put it back. had the curse thought of reviving the voting art games. I mean, they were fun, but, but only you can, can decide if you, uh, if you're up for that level of audience participation. <laughs> Oh yeah, the yeah, but I think we proved I think we proved to you in chat when you designed the first demon that we're awful. <laughs> that we are not to be trusted. That you need to give us options only that you are that you are willing to do because if you let us we will design a thousand headed, thousand limbed <laughs> horror creature. Oh well, that's good. If you, uh, if if that's the goal, then then we're up for it. For reference to those who are unfamiliar with what we are describing, Hannah streamed a uh, a stream in which she allowed chat through timed polls to design a demon uh, in the style of sort of what we're doing, medieval illumination. And uh, and she allowed us to choose things like the the horrible features it had, and the number of limbs it had, and the the number of things like wings and horns and and goat legs it had, and we were awful to her. And any time she gave us any option to have like hundreds, we chose it. Yes, she learned that the joke options always get the most votes, which, uh, which meant that, um, Hannah, is there, is there an image of that horrifying creature? It's really, it's really on, on topic for this, for this medieval illumination stream. I feel that you should link everyone, or at least me, I'll put it up on stream and everyone can, can gaze at the thing that we did to you. Because, uh, because it was glorious and horrible. Yes, there we go. Let's see if I can get that 
adjust the image. Yes, there we go. Just uh, plop that in the center here for everyone to gaze upon in horror. I would like to point out that there is a face in the middle of its chest. And, uh, and that it has five heads and two sets of wings and uh, multiple goat legs stuck in various places. So, yeah, that, that was my, I think that the, the, the face stuck on the chest was, in fact, uh, my horrifying, <laughs> horrifying thought. Um, but yeah, this is, this is what happened when, uh, when Hannah allowed us to, to design a demon for her. I really, I really rallied for it. It was, I had opinions. I made, I made it happen, you guys. I made I made a significant part of this beautiful horrible demon happen. So I'm just you know just just to show you the the glory. Um, there it is. <laughs> so. So she's discussing doing something like that again, and everyone, everyone, in everyone who who adores uh, who adores when I draw for D and D or Sheep Guana would really would really enjoy design a demon stream. So I highly recommend highly recommend you uh, express your interest and convince her to do it because it's excellent fun and just right up the alley of those of those people who sit in my chat and and suggest that I draw fire fire breathing slash farting sheep guanas so for your for your continued enthusiasm while we continue drawing angry, angry baby quail. Yes, if you wind up with, with just, with just tiny quail everywhere, you'll know what happened. You'll know I was, I was too adamant. <laughs> And the quail contingent followed you. It's like baby quail and sheep guana follow you everywhere now. All right. Lots of baby quail. Lots of baby quail. I think we'll... Hmm. Am I going to put lines for the fire? Am I going to ink the fire? It would be fair for me to be sitting in your stream going quail, quail. I'll uh, we'll just... No, I feel like what I would do is just sheep guana at you. Since you, you, since you quail at me, I'll just, I'll just show up in your stream chat and just shout sheep guana as an answer to every question you ask. I think I think the quail being breathed on is is being um it's being project like like spat out. It's anger burns hotter than the fire. Yes, there we go. It's uh. It's relying on gravity to keep it ahead of the fire. Yeah, you keep keep working on the Valkyrie on the Val Valkyries Val yeah Val Valkyries, Quailries Val. Mm, it's a little hard to say. It's it's close to a really good pun, but it's a little difficult to pronounce. It's so close.
You'll get there. You'll you'll figure out you'll figure out the perfect Valkyrie pun for Quail. I have faith. This letter S is really upset. I don't know. I don't know what's happened, but but he's in a really bad mood. Just get some ink details on there. So what does what does sheep guana armor look like? How do we how do we account for the wool? We don't want it to get tangled. And they're fairly low to the ground. In spite of in spite of this medieval illumination. Like like cat armor? Do they do they have like segments so that it's you know like the um, like those flexi fish ornaments that you can get where it's it's segments so that it, it can bend sideways? I feel like I've just described an extremely esoteric specific thing that you could buy only in like Chinatown in San Francisco and no one knows what I'm talking about. But uh but you know Cloisonne fish ornaments. That's not how you say that word either. But you know what I mean. Colored enamel. Colored enamel and metal in in metal framework. A French word. French, a language I don't speak or pronounce properly, which made art history fun. Oh, oh San Francisco, Chinatown. If you're in San Francisco and you want really good tea, go to Chinatown and go to Red Blossom Tea Shop. They are my favorite. And not just because they always give me tea when I just hang out in there for hours. Um, but yeah, apparently down the street there's a there's some more questionable ones. Rumor has it. But then who knows? Who knows about the dark secrets of tea? I mean, you know. Someone, certainly. And then you reach that moment where you just have nowhere else to take that, that whole conversation and you just need a new topic. So I hit a, I hit a T dead end, you guys. I don't know. I don't know where else to go with, with that besides my endorsement. So medieval illumination. Well, Jack, Jack is actually, Jack's actually asleep in his cat bed. In fact, it would, if I hadn't, I think I, th I think he knocked over the whole, the whole camera contraption, um, because it would have been a really excellent, uh, it would, it would have been a perfect time for cat cam, but I don't know, I don't know where the camera has gone. I think it's, oh no, it's right, it's right there. We could. We could we could briefly we could briefly show you a, a a cat a cat cam image, but I'll have to hold it up into the air. I think I think we can make this work. Webcam. There, oh, it's the whole screen somehow. Cool. Anyway, there's my cat asleep in his cat bed. <laughs> just uh, just for your fun for your fun extra moment there.
of my cat. My my very my very good cat. Yeah, I didn't I did I could have I could have put it into the side, but I was literally like holding it up with one hand and controlling the system with the other to show you the thing and it just it was it was too it was too too many things to juggle to try and and, and make it a permanent permanent fixture this week. But I'll try and get cat cam back for future for future digital streams. Um, since Jack the Cat spends most of his life just right there in that window cat bed. So it's, it's, unless he's drug it slightly out of the way so that it's hard to get on camera. <laughs> it's pretty, it's a pretty permanent situation. It's pretty reliable with his cat bed. Uh, our our craft has has put thought has put thought into into the armor, and has come up with a with a proper response. Oh yeah, find a far. Yes, yes, based on based on the Mongol armor. It makes perfect sense. But yeah, I feel like I feel like because of the flexibleness of the body of the sheep guana, it would have to have multiple multiple layered parts along the sides so that it could it could bend side to side. So you have to divide your, your sheep guana into zones, armor zones. And of course you'd want it to overlap because you don't want you don't want any 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 stabbing to get through to your sheep guana. It's good, it's good, it's good that we've put thought into this. Now we know. Because now that we've got now that we've got sheep guana sheep guana fiction, you understand that the next the next step really is basically fan art. Other people need to draw sheep guana. Besides besides Hannah, who I consider because because of because of what we've put her through, one of the originators of the sheep guana. Uh, so hey, if anyone's if anyone's bored and feels the need to to draw armored armored sheep guana, just saying, carry on. Also, if anyone wants to do silly bird D and D art and uh, and has questions or concerns about about various um, iconography for 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 the paladin orders and such. Don't worry, I will show you. I will I will I will make you whatever you need if it means that you'll that you'll do hilarious sheep guana or bird D and D fan art. You are encouraged. To participate. It will be glorious. Also, if anyone wants to, to draw a Hero the Hen or Leon the Gander, yeah, that's right. I, I've, I've brought them back up. Um, you know, just, just go for it. <laughs> Just gonna keep. I'm just gonna keep bringing them up without ever telling you their actual story. 
like they're characters in a novel or something. And that you should know. Just, just eternally mentioning them with no other context. Getting, getting the baby sheep guana s in there. Baby sheep guana apparently have longer necks than adult sheep guana. Don't know how that happens, but what can you do? Some sheep go on the toes in there because he's standing on his toes. For the sake of this pose, to make an S. Get some more wool in there. In case you're wondering, I'm still still not over, still not over camel camel leopards, camel leopards. Still not over it. It's gonna be. It's gonna be bringing me joy for weeks. Oh, also known as questing beasts. What are they questing for? And will they ever find it? Oh, people quested for them. I see. Because... Because if only you could find the mythical... Camel leopard. You'd be unstoppable in battle. Is that? Oh, like Sir Pelinor. Hmm. He was questing for for a camel leopard. I don't know why. Oh no. Just because. Just because sometimes. You need a Oh I don't I don't remember this particular story. Apparently I did not have to read it in sixth grade. But now I now I wanna know now I wanna know why you quest for why you quest for camel leopards. Just you know. For the sake of it. Oh, uh, S curve. Oh. Oh, S curves. You're easier. You're easier with, with tools and or math. Trying to make you nice and smooth. In Photoshop is hard. All right, getting there. Close, close to color. Close to color. I think we might actually maybe finish, almost finish, close to finish this today. We'll see how it goes. 
Oh, I drifted off target. Big sweeping tail curve. Ideally get this finished today because tomorrow I am leaving on vacation. And I am not going to work on anything for an entire week. So there will be no stream next week because I will be gone. I'll be sitting on a beach, not streaming or working or doing anything in particular. I'm quite looking forward to it. I think it will be lovely. That's okay. There's where all my layers are. Get some some thicker lines for the border. Nope, nope, not that tool. And then I think we'll do color for the for the background bits of the uh, of the border. Oh, stop it. Be in the right place. Ah, the joy of being able to erase and layers for medieval monks. No layers. To fix everything by scraping it off of the paper. Imagine how frustrating that is. Okay. Almost. Just a few more lines. Is that? Yeah, that's an okay place for that line to be. That line is more like here. Race around baby quail. Kind of slightly sloppy erase, because why not? Okay. Okay, we keep that, turn these off. Excellent. Now let's do some color lines. Find my reference art over here on the other screen. Okay. Go with something like this. Have it be a little bit transparent. And do some grass lines. Oh. A little bit more. Turned down the transparency on the wrong thing. Okay. Grass. And then we'll move on to figuring out what of my thousand million hundred brushes to use to simulate basically temper paint color. 
could just flat color it and then texture it, I guess. That's another option. Which might be more useful if I want to t-shirt it. But my main concern is trying to make it look quote unquote real. So I want it to look a little bit like the actual painted manuscript. Ideally. Chat, you started out so rowdy and you've gone so quiet. You tired yourselves out with with all of your with all of your medieval animal adventures. Did I scare everyone away with my story of of art director trolling? Is everyone is everyone taking a nap? Has it become have I have I re, have I reverted to 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 Bob Ross weird animal where we just calmly and cheerfully talk about what I'm doing as I do it cuz cuz that's fine Oh, is there is there a dead zone that happens 2.5 hours in? Is that is that a thing that happens? Everyone's run out of things to say. I talked myself into a corner and I didn't have anywhere to go. And when that happens, I just go back to telling you exactly what I'm doing as I'm doing it. Because, you know, this is, this is an art stream, and I'm, and I'm making art. Excitingly drawing individual blades of grass. I've got to figure out, unrelated, why my, uh, why my Cintiq skips like that sometimes. I have a suspicion it's my computer's fault. Oh, I can't I can't shorten it, then I wouldn't have time to color the sheep guana. Now I don't I don't mind that I don't mind if chat is quiet. I can I can always chill and talk about what I'm doing. Chat was just uh just very energetic earlier. So I wondered what had happened if everyone had had burned themselves out and was taking a nap. Also for research purposes. Oh, weird. Arcraft, I don't, hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if the welcome to chat message shows up. I, I also recently got it and I'm not sure uh, what it meant for me because I'm, I'm literally streaming it. So, I don't know. Um, I, Arcraft, I'm not, was your last post about, about Mongol armor? Because that's the last that I have, is uh, the bit from Wikipedia about Mongol armor. If, if it was, if it was other, other than that, then it did not appear for me. Although, I have been only glancing back and forth because I've been I've been focused on on inking and painting. Okay, let's see. Now, now, let's let's go on a paintbrush adventure. Oh, wait! I have a solution to this hilarious problem of too many brushes. Oh. No, it was now I'm imagining a medieval monk inventing layers by using as many sheets of really thin parchment tacked together. Yes! No, we did not get that one, but now we have. So hooray! Um, they're so fun story. 
that animation used to be any sort of depth in, it in traditional animation was done with uh, with multi layers of plate glass and you'd put stuff on them and in different layers and that's you'd move things on each layer and that's how that's how you'd get sort of depth and like complicated background animation and stuff. Yuri Norstein, Hedgehog in the Fog, was done with a hilariously large number of different levels of plate glass. And now I've distracted myself with, what was I looking for? This is what I was looking for. <laughs> now I've distracted myself with stories of Russian animation. I have a gouache cheat sheet. Let's see. Maybe big, wide, soft. Or... Or little round bristle. That that seems those seem. Let's let's start with the soft one. That's right. I have so many brushes. I invented a, a brush cheat sheet. <laughs> so I could keep up with. Now what did I say? Oh, wide soft. Oh yeah, that 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 feels good. That feels pretty good. Let's let's start with wide soft. And do some some background painting here. I keep clicking on the wrong. There we go. It's uh Yeah, like I like the Photoshop the the brushes where they give you um like a preview but the there's the other kind that doesn't anyway there's a giant there's also a watercolor cheat sheet on my desktop for photoshop brushes because i have too many photoshop brushes but that's fine what we need is a good sky blue it's like that maybe Is that maybe a little bit not vibrant enough? Uh, maybe it's fine. I can always change it later because digital magic. To be fair, digital art has made any art production that I do like way faster because if I'm using traditional media I just I'm obsessive about like considering and thumbnailing and testing colors and like being really 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 sure and if I can just use the, the computer to shift them later then I, I can I can panic less Panic less and draw faster. All right, I'm kind of gradiating this a little bit. And clean up. We don't need to clean up the sheep guana really because we're just going to paint over it. Oh no, I forgot. The sky goes down here too. Oh no. Gotta fix my whole sky. There we go. No, there we go. And then we need some, some grass. Let's go with something a little bit a little bit brighter, a little bit. Grass color. Over the, over the sky, over the hill. And 
Mm, this gouache brush may be too transparent. We'll see. Let's let's try a color gradient. Let's see if it. That I mean that's that's kind of all right. Yeah. Yeah, it feels 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 painterly. But I think we're gonna need to use something more trans no, the opposite. More opaque for the for the foreground. So that we can properly see the sheep guana. Let's see, let's see, let's see. What about you? Are you kind of powdery? Oh. Maybe a little round bristle? Or was it bristle one? Yeah, that's better. Welcome to the stream. Sarah reads brush names and tests and tests Photoshop brushes. So I feel like we want kind of a cream, a creamy, a creamy colored wool. Get some some sort of like a golden fleece. We'll go. We'll go with that. Like a a nice a nice warm golden fleece color for sheep guano wool. Get some. Okay, Hannah, I have a question. How is it that you have embargo icons everywhere? How how is it that you can that you can margo in my stream? How can I too have icons that I can use wherever I want? Is really what I'm asking. Can I can I can I sheep guana at people? Oh. Oh, I see what happened. You got affiliate status. And then you get all of those fun perks. Well, something to look forward to. Oh yeah, bits and subscriptions, whatever, what I want. What I want is to be able to have my own picture icons. That's what I want. A very, a very specific goal. Just I just wanna I just wanna to to let people quail and sheep guana in the as as a, as an as an emote in the chat. Yeah, it's like that's fine. It's let's subscribe, whatever. But mostly, but mostly, I want I want fun pictures. Mostly, I just want the, the perks of fun pictures. Ooh, badges. Yeah, so, uh, oh, I didn't make a new layer. I've just been, just been charging right ahead. Oh, well, that's how we're doing it now what's happened <laughs> choices were made um, 
So yeah, if you haven't if you haven't followed me already on Twitch, if you click that follow icon button thing, someday, someday, we could have we could have our very own sheep guana emotes. Baby quail. Help us help us reach the point where Auntie Shepherd can just show me 50 baby quail images in a single post instead of typing quail out. Just make it easier for everyone. Just, you know. Let us let us have more more images for faster sharing. Let us turn all of our in-jokes into emotes. Imagine, imagine the joy and the glory that could be ours. But there's, here's the fun thing. You don't have to subscribe. I don't think you can subscribe until I'm affiliate. All you have to do is follow. And I have 50, I think it's 50. I don't know. Twitch, Twitch kind of gamified its whole, like, how to become a, a more, how to unlock things how to become an affiliate. So one of them is to like have a certain number of people following your, your channel, um, which costs no money and just means that it sends you a little email every time I'm going to go live or every time I have gone live rather, um, which you don't need cause I, cause I yell about it on Twitter all the time, but But following is free and easy and is apparently what I need to be able to give us all fun icons and emotes and badges, which I'll be honest, I don't know what badges are, but we could find out together. Um. Yeah, I don't, I mean, I haven't looked too deeply into the subscription element of, uh, of Twitch because, uh, I didn't, I don't have them, but, uh, but following, becoming, becoming an affiliate and having the power to, uh, to do some cute things with, with the visuals. Is really, it's really, that's all, that's all I, that's all I'm asking. I, uh, still, still working on, on, on plans to, to figure out how to make a Patreon work. Trying to, to come up with a good way to sort of integrate Patreon stuff with with what I'm already doing, which I kind of want to keep for everybody. I don't I don't really like the idea of of subscription only general content for this, but but I I would want if I did a Patreon to have some extra sort of things for people who were patrons as opposed to to people who are just watching so still working on on how to make that work to my satisfaction really but uh yeah that's actually things like that um thinking of thinking of 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 ways to sort of have subscription service things like you get prints every so often things like that um, doing streams maybe where where patrons get to uh, get to pick the content um, or doing a, a stream every now and then where it's just patron requests so it's you know just 
what what you ask me to draw if you're a patron. Um, there is there is a valid reason that I've never done Patreon before, and that reason is that I uh, I don't stick to topics. Um, it's not intentional or anything, but I have a tendency to spend you know a few months drawing like a lot of one thing, and then just sort of feeling like I've like to swap to something else, move on for a bit. So like if one day I'm drawing D and D birds, and the next I'm like, you know what? Uh, I want to draw like people with swords for a while, uh, or you know, go back to botanical illustration. Um, I don't like the idea of people who are subscribing to something I'm doing feeling like they were subscribed for something that I was doing that I've decided to take a break from. Um, so that's kind of always been my, my fear slash hesitation is the idea that, that I will, I will feel obligated to, to sort of continue something that I'm not that interested in because that's what people expect or alternately that people will be disappointed if I just sort of move on. <laughs> Um, so, you know, that's, that's why I sort of preferred the idea of the Ko-Fi. I'm never going to say it. Coffee, you can't make me. That's not how you spelled it. Uh -huh. <laughs> Just because then it, it, it was an element of, oh, you, you, uh, just, just, uh, just donate when I've done a thing that you enjoyed rather than. rather than, like, subscribe to the whole thing. Welcome. Welcome to stream, where we're talking about the very specifics of being a self-employed artist. Um, that being said, um, the one-time donation model is, unfortunately, not that helpful for, uh, for planning one's use of time. Personally, I would like to start doing more of this kind of stuff, more of my personal work, more streams, less, um, less client hired contract work, but functionally in order to do that, um, I need a revenue stream as opposed to, you know, a tip jar as it were. So that's kind of the challenge for your for your full disclosure moment. The trials and tribulations of being an artist. Uh, and I hope that that was at least sort of interesting and not just super, super boring. We can go back to talking about about illuminated manuscripts and fictional fictional creatures now. Now we've talked about some business. We can we can go back to talking about camel leopards. Camel leopards and, and Hero the Hen and, and Leon the Gander, the characters that I have created a running joke about for myself. Just for me. It's just for me. I keep bringing them up for myself. <laughs> yes. <laughs> ah. It's this, uh. Welcome to Friday Tea Time, where we've gone deep. Real talk. We'll talk around around illuminated manuscript sheep guana. Just just see how many. Oh, all the people are still viewing. We haven't frightened them away, Hannah. 
everyone's still listening to us <laughs> talk about about the trials and tribulations of of being an artist on the internet. Ah, yes, medieval pillow shading. <laughs> I just I, look. I don't know. I. Sometimes you gotta talk about about the reality. Sometimes you gotta gotta get all serious. You know, one thing that I that I do think I think it's actually kind of important to talk more about that. And one thing that I've noticed over the years is that in a lot of cases someone can be quite well known on the internet, have the popular webcomic or, you know, that kind of thing. And, uh, and frequently people idly assume that that kind of thing equates to financial success. And I think it's kind of important to point out that it, that it actually doesn't, that, that there are very real sort of financial concerns and necessities. Oh, fish lips. That's nice. I mean, sewing the lips onto a fish. So, uh, what else is there to say, really? It's fish lips, sewing lips onto fish, obviously. I'm going to go out on a limb and assume it's, uh, it's not a, a live fish, or, or even a once live fish, just for the sake of of argument. <laughs> so. Imagine, oh, oh no. Okay, everyone, I have a I have a a thing that you need to know about me. I I was too old for Pokémon to be a thing that I was really into. But my favorite Pokemon is Magikarp, and I'm standing behind that. My favorite Pokemon is the is the fish that looks worried and like it's dying. I love it. It's my favorite. It always will be. There will be another never there will never be another Pokemon for me. Only Magikarp. Only Magikarp forever. Oh. Magikarp is the best Pokemon and I'm standing by it. Yes, Magikarp jump. Yay. I don't want it to, to transform into something else. I want it to stay a sad, worried fish forever. Oh, so good. It's like carefully, carefully painting, painting iguana horns here. Sheep horns, sheep horns, I guess, on the iguana. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't, I don't know the Magikarp song. Um, and yeah, I don't, I don't know, I don't know many other Pokemon, frankly. Uh, all you like, I just, I became enamored of the fish, and that was, that was all I really needed. I didn't, I didn't need to find out about the others. <laughs> yes, exactly. It's an orange. It's an orange fish. It's good. Um, also, I didn't have I didn't have a sort of sort of childhood affection for Pokemon because I was too old. It was it was in that it was in that specific range of things that were that were not cool. It's 
So, oh, too dark, too dark a green. So yeah, so just just magic art. Beyond that, I got I got nothing really about Pokemon besides besides Magikarp is the best. Which, if you think about it, is a little bit odd given that I've spent the last fair while essentially in inventing creatures. But, you know. It's, uh... Yay! Favorite ridiculous fish. It's important, it's important to have a favorite ridiculous fish. Ridiculous animals are just fun anyway. All right. Well, I was hoping we were going to be able to get all the color in, but we're getting up towards the end of stream, friends. And I have not gotten all the color in. I got on a whole tangent about Patreon and art life and carefully shading sheep guana wool. And I don't think we're gonna we're gonna get it all in there. But I will finish him when I get back from vacation and get him up for you. I probably won't finish him today though, because uh I have a flight tomorrow morning and I have not packed yet. So uh, I'm gonna have to do that when I finish this stream. Lest I forget anything. My mom texted me to remind me to bring tea, which is excellent advice. So I gotta remember to pack tea. And I gotta make sure that all the pottery is covered and stored properly and everything is good. Oh no, a Magikarp skeleton. Oh, chat. Chat, it's gone, it's gone dark. Oh, let's see. I think he needs a little bit of yellow in his iguana eyes. I'll give him instead of there we go. Let's see if we can. Let's get let's try and at least get some stripes on the tail. Eh. Also, I don't think I like this green that much. I think it might it might blend in too much with the green in the background. Oh well, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna do something clever and finally make a new layer. I had sort of committed to just going with it, but now that I'm gonna make stripes, I think I think I should make a new layer. Just getting the last of these things in. Um, oh, excellent skeleton fish bag. Also, hello, Studio Lay. I'm glad that I'm keeping you company while you sew the lips onto fish. It is a worthy pursuit. And also making things together is fun. Let's rapidly color this green tail.
before we wrap this stream up with an overview and a and a promise for sheep go on a future. Yet the screen just kind of disappears into the background. May have to may have to fiddle with it in the future. Yes, shared creativity time is excellent. Uh, it's also really, really nice to, to feel like, like you're working along with someone else, but also that, that sort of, I enjoy feeling like I'm inspiring people to do, to do some art. It's one of the reasons why I get so excited every time our craft writes a sheep go on a thing is that it makes me feel like I inspired someone else's creativity. And that's awesome. Because there's one of, one of the things that I enjoy a great deal is seeing someone else do some art or seeing someone else's work and just feeling really excited to get back and do something of my own that feeling of sort of creative inspiration based on someone else's creativity is always really, really enjoyable and fun. It's always nice to see what someone else is doing and think, oh, I could do a, th I could do a thing that would be so, so good. I, I want to go and, and make something right now. And that thing that I'm going to make is a, is a sheep guana illumination because, you know, of course it is. Okay, let's let's do some stripies. See where I put there? There it was there's the stripe layer. Okay. Oh, thank you, Necro Buffalo. I'm glad I'm glad that I'm glad that I'm managing to inspire some creativity. And I really enjoy everybody who comes into chat and helps me tell weird stories and create weird animals. It's super excellent. Um, and yeah, never forget that, that this is uh, this creature that we're doing right here, right now is, is a group creation, a thing the internet made and that all of you possess. based on a poem <laughs> that Fywern wrote. The same poem, in fact, that we are illuminating. Oh wow. Our craft. I'm glad that you're back into it. I'm glad that I'm glad that, that writing sheep guana has inspired you to write again. Sheep guana, sheep guana muse. Is best. Is best muse. Let's, ah, there we go. That feels, that feels better. Something a little bit bluer on that. Yeah. Stripes. Stripies. Okay, stripey tail. Let's let's. Oh, that is the. Oh, that is the right layer. It is the right layer. Everything is fine. All all of my choices were correct. <laughs> At least the ones involving this layer. Oh my god, Hannah! I haven't, I haven't saved this this file this entire time. It's still Untitled One. Oh my holy god! <laughs> oh no! Oh no! What what has happened? It's 
Oh no. Don't worry, I just I have to find the right folder. It's fine. It's fine, look, look, I'm saving. I'm saving now. It's, it's saved. Everything is safe. <laughs> How would I explain it to you guys if if after I closed out stream and closed the window, I just closed this file and then thought, oh no. How would I explain how would I explain my foolishness? You know what I should do? I should really I should really save save the file before I start the stream with a name so that it's already there and I can just hit control S over and over again. As I go to try and keep it safe. Because I don't I don't think about it. As I'm trying to talk and draw at the same time, I forget I forget all of my good file saving habits. Well, the other problem is that there's stuff on my computer that uh, I cannot broadcast live because of NDAs, so I have to be kind of careful what shows up on this screen when I save things. So I should save it so that I can have control over where the files show up, what things open, so I don't accidentally betray, betray client confidentiality. It's just, just yeah, just a little, just a little bot in chat that that just uh, just asks me if I've saved recently. Perfect. Okay, I think this is this is probably as far as we're gonna get. It is it is six six oh three. We started a little bit late because I was eating cake, and that's fair. So we'll we'll uh, we'll settle this here, and I think kind of do the wrap up chat. Uh, I feel like it's like we've made good progress. So you can kind of picture how it's gonna be when it's done anyway, so so that's helpful. So there will be calligraphy sort of down down here by this by this sheep guana S. That will be the poem that Vyvern slash Tyson on Twitter wrote. Um, I will put it up when it's done. We'll have, uh, we'll have prints if you want. Uh, because it is Vyvern's poem, a print will be coming to you as a thanks for, for being a part of the, the weirdness that we've all created together. The file is saved. Again, just extra saved, super saved. It's also, it's, it's also, I don't know what size anymore, but it'll probably be an eight by 10 print. Um, making it bigger seems disingenuous to the, to the tininess that is actual manuscript illumination, which is sort of a very small, personal, fiddly kind of drawing. Um, We'll see. Maybe we'll maybe we'll do a special edition where we do actual gold leaf or something on the border, and it'll be fun and exciting, and uh, everyone can have a little bit of sheep guana for themselves. And yeah, thanks for thanks for joining me and teaching me about about the uh, the excitement that is that is camel leopards. Yep, still still not over camel leopards. I'll let you know when I'm back from vacation if I've forgotten about them or if I'm still saying camel leopard to myself every now and then and giggling. I'm leaving on a plane tomorrow morning, so I will not be streaming next week. If you uh, really can't deal with me being completely gone, you can watch my Instagram and I'll probably put up vacation photos of, uh, of the beach because I'm going to go and sit on a beach and just sit on a beach, basically. Uh, I'm going to do my favorite vacation activity, which is taking watercolors to places and then not painting with them. <sighs> Just obsessively carrying around a travel watercolor set literally everywhere I go and never using it is is like my solid favorite vacation pastime. I'll do like one quick painting 
at the very end to justify carrying it the whole time. So there will be no stream this coming Friday. The Friday after that, we will go back to ceramics. I don't know what we'll do yet, um, but I'm thinking about some sort of uh, build, like build it as we go. Chat. I might, I might do like a base mug or something, and um, kind of let Chet tell me what to add to it as we go. Something that's a little bit more interactive um, and fun for pottery. Ideally, also I will have worked out the uh, the focus issues on my camera for pottery by then. So hopefully that'll be extra extra fun and sort of extra extra like group activity. And until then, medieval sheep guana will just uh, finish him and and I'm going to go pack. <laughs> So, thanks for joining me today on Friday Tea Time, and uh, hope everyone has a good evening and a good next week. I will be thinking of you fondly from vacation, and until then, sheep guana! Bye, everybody.